Good morning, brothers and sisters. Repentance. What does repentance mean? If we look at the Greek meaning of the word repentance, it is defined most commonly in the New Testament as metanoia. The Greek word metanoia means a change of mind as it appears to one who repents of a purpose he has formed or of something he has done. Now the word repent is often used in conjunction with repenting of sin or turning away from something. Let's look at some of the New Testament uses of the word repent. Matthew chapter 4 verses 16 through 17 says, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 12, verse 41. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater Jonah is here. Luke chapter 24 verse 47 says, Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Acts chapter 17 verse 30 Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given us assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 8 through 10 says, For even if I made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it. For I perceive that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Revelation 3 verses 19 through 20 says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Now, if we are saved by faith alone through grace alone, then what kind of faith are we talking about here? Indeed, Romans 10 verses 9 through 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So is repentance simply a turning from unbelief to belief? Well, James chapter 2, verse 19 says, You believe there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Now the demons believe, but it doesn't lead them to salvation. So let me just state very clearly that biblical repentance is not a work required for salvation. Biblical repentance is a heart attitude we have that leads to salvation like 2 Corinthians chapter 7 was talking about. Nobody is saved without realizing their need for a Savior. Why do we need a Savior? 
to save us from our sins. He died for our sins. So it's this type of repentant faith that I want to illustrate. Look at this illustration here on the screen. The fact that repentance and faith are simply two different sides of the same coin or two different aspects of the one event of conversion may be seen in this diagram. The person who genuinely turns to Christ for salvation must at the same time release the sin to which he or she has been clinging and turn away from that sin in order to turn to Christ. Thus, neither repentance nor faith comes first. They come together. When Christ invites sinners, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, he immediately adds, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. To come to him includes taking his yoke upon us, being subject to his direction and guidance, learning from him, and being obedient to him. If we are unwilling to make such a commitment, then we have not truly placed our trust in him. When scripture speaks of trusting in God, it connects such trust with genuine repentance. For example, Isaiah gives testimony to this in Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Here, both repentance of sin and coming to God for pardon are mentioned. In the New Testament, Paul summarizes his gospel ministry as one of testifying both to Jews and to Greeks, of repentance to God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 20, verse 21. The author of Hebrews includes as the first two elements in a list of doctrines, repentance from dead works and faith toward God. Hebrews 6, verse 1. Now, of course, sometimes faith alone is mentioned as the thing necessary for coming to Christ for salvation, such as John 3.16, Romans 10, verse 9, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Those passages, which are very familiar, and we emphasize them often enough when explaining the gospel. But do we often realize that there are many other passages where only repentance is named? For to simply assume that true repentance will also involve faith in Christ for forgiveness of sins. The New Testament authors understood so well that genuine repentance and genuine faith had to go together that they often simply mentioned repentance alone with the understanding that faith would also be included. Because turning from sins in a genuine way is impossible apart from a genuine turning to God. Thus it is written that Christ should suffer on the third day and raise, excuse me, and rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations. When we realize that genuine saving faith must be accompanied by genuine repentance for sin, it helps us to understand why some preaching of the gospel has such inadequate results today. If there is no mention of the need for repentance, sometimes the gospel message becomes only believe in Jesus Christ and be saved, without any mention of repentance at all. But this watered-down version of the gospel does not ask for a wholehearted commitment to Christ. Commitment to Christ, if genuine, must include a commitment to turn from sin. Preaching the need for faith without repentance is preaching only half of the gospel. It will result in many people being deceived, thinking that they had heard the Christian gospel and tried it, but nothing has happened. They might even say something like, I accepted Christ as Savior over and over again and it never worked. Yet they never really did receive Christ as their Savior, for he comes to us in his majesty and invites us to receive him as he is, the one who deserves to be and demands to be absolute Lord of our lives. So in conclusion, brothers and sisters, repentance is not to be considered a work for salvation. The Bible is clear. We are not saved by our good works. However, the type of faith that we are saved by 
is a repentant faith, a faith that understands that it was our sin that Jesus took on the cross. It was the wrath of God poured out on Him that you and I deserved. When we are saved, it is with the understanding and confession of our hearts that it was our sin that nailed Christ to that cross. Simply describing repentance as turning from unbelief to belief is an inadequate description of the faith we demonstrate at conversion. Our faith at conversion is one that changes our hearts forever. God bless.